Um, thank you, Simone. Um, I would like to actually read that uh, wonderful, insightful text <laughs> from the booklet. Uh, and then I'd also like to talk a little bit about the paradox of observing a new generation um, in the work of two of the other speakers who are very inspiring to me. Um, so, like this annual marathon, 89 plus is an exercise in finitude and infinity, the arbitrary and the specific. The purpose of 89 plus is not to catalog a generation, and the purpose of a marathon is not to exhaust the subject, and yet those are exactly their aims. But no matter how rapid and varied the succession of speakers, a deserving subject is inexhaustible. It's blown up in every sense, enlarged, shattered, and elevated. Similarly, no amount of data mining or postulating can restrain a generation within a typological profile. Generations used to correlate to lifetimes. As a figure of distance, a generation lasted about 20 years. 20 years kept Gen Xers away from boomers, fenced off um, silence from the GIs, and uh, worldview was set in maturity around the time one might marry, have children, and begin to graft this temporal enlightenment onto them to be rejected in the form of a new zeitgeist. Then generations sped up. Adolescent curiosity tested online can quickly develop into intellectual adulthood, or more relevant to this conversation, into cultural literacy and agency. Kids are able to form their own global vernaculars and moods at virtually any age nowadays. At the same time, generationality has become a conceptual structure for progress throughout commerce and consciousness. Any crucial product is released in generations, each beholden to their own tendencies and associations. Memes and news cycles are household logics. The idea that advancement, replacement, and paradigm shift are now constantly engaged operations updating the world has stagnated what is a climate of ceaseless transition. So, like a Californian without seasons, we observe them anyway. The 1980s brought the millennials and the 2000s the new silence. However, no longer does a 20 year span encompass a consistent generation. It only holds a name for it. Using time to demarcate phases of life is no longer science, it's poetry. Today, there's no need to say that a generation begins and ends. Classifying one shares that it's over and 10 more have since taken root. Nearly half the world was born in the past quarter century. The rest are about to become a new minority staring out over a symbolic cliff. The more we know about the new generations, the less tempted anyone will be to evoke personas dictated by historical forebears. 89 plus is a marathon itself, a future bound and full of runners. Its generation begins with the dissolution of generations. Uh, whenever we arrive at a picture of what it looks like, we just as quickly move on and it blurs into an average of divergences. So um, when I was thinking about 89 plus and the 89 plus marathon and the, the word generation, I was thinking a lot about how uh, it's really taken on two very clear meanings, one being more of a sociological one, um, people born within a certain period of time, and that's something that seems will always sort of be dictated by phases of people's lives in adulthood, childhood, teenage years, all of these things. Uh, but then there's also this sort of fractalized assortment of uh, cultural and ideological generations that don't necessarily correlate with age. Um, but what's really amazing is when still those two things uh, there's a synchronicity and you feel uh, belonging to a sort of generation that is not only what you're born into but matches with your ideas. And for me, um, since I'm not really an artist or presenting any sort of research or anything on a specific subject, I thought I could just very personally share um, uh, sort of like a continuum between two of the other speakers who comprised my uh, a art, I guess, zeitgeist generation that I really feel inspired by. And the first one would be uh, K-Hole. And um, I um, just very briefly uh, don't want to get into what they're actually presenting tomorrow, but their, um, their new, their uh, um, trend forecasting uh, art collective, I guess you'd say, and uh, their new report proposes the death of age and youth as a behavioral style rather than a phase of life, uh, which I think ties into a similar idea. Um, and sorry, I sort of lost my train of thought. Um, but And then the other um, person that's really inspiring to me, I think in a different way, 
is uh, somebody who's been mentioned a lot, and that's Ryan Tercarton. Um, and I see Cahill as a part of a really interesting movement that isn't uh, entirely new in this, well, a movement of uh, artists and groups of artists who are responding to corporate culture and corporate logics and uh, mimicking, but in a sort of post-ironic, post-cynical, not really mimicking, but just like actually acting like a corporation in, in these ways and using these languages uh, in a way that is sort of generation, uh, generationally unique because even though artists have sort of posed or acted as companies and other entities at other points in time, um, people of a certain age are born into a world where rather than a, a mistrust of corporations or an anxiety about that sort of thing, uh, there's, I think, just the common knowledge that they are, have more influence than traditional states. And uh, it, I think that the work that Cahill and other people like this magazine and Shenzai Benniel are doing is sort of um, bringing communication about uh, these cultural codes, I guess, up, up to date and are very uh, fresh and honest. Uh, so I see that sort of as a really influential movement that's happening. And uh, with Ryan Tricartan, I think it's a very different kind of thing because for me, he's always been this very uh, singular, sort of timeless figure um, who, for me, uh, were, uh, I, don't, um, I don't really know how to say this because it ends up feeling more like sharing my diary now than actually like a really coherent thought. But uh, being sort of generationally synced up with uh, him and his work, I've really uh, seen, I don't know, had a feeling of a sort of person from his, uh, sorry, I'm, I lost my train of thought. Um, but anyway, his, the, he'll be, sh the, a work of Ryan's will be showed later tonight uh, called Junior War. And um, this, reaching back to what I was initially talking about in that text about um, generations not necessarily um, being in sync with uh, group people um, who are born at a certain time. It's, this work was shot in 1999 uh, in rural Ohio. Uh, it was footage of shot of people in his high school when he was a high school student, and then the film was completed um, this year. Um, but um, I. Um, the, well, there's, I wanted to end talking about memory because um, last year the marathon was about memory and I think that's really fitting because talking about a new generation is sort of like making a memory of the present and in general what I'm trying to arrive at is that uh, there's sort of a very complex and paradoxical relationship between uh, um, like a closeness and a distance that is always playing back and forth uh, when sort of looking ahead to a new generation. Uh, thank you.